Welcome to TechZine TV. Hi, welcome to this new episode of TechZine TV. I'm at Schneider Electric's Global Innovation Summit, and I'm here with Steve Carlini. You have a, an in interesting role at Schneider, right? So could you explain a little bit more about that to start with? Yeah, I'm, I'm now the chief advocate for AI and data centers, so I spend a lot of time uh, speaking at events, talking to the press, talking to analysts, and writing a lot of content. Uh, about oh, you're, what's you're, you're a f fellow writer, basically. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, so we can make, maybe ex exchange <laughs> notes on that as well. <laughs> you like writing? I do. Ah, I, I, I find it uh, much, much more good. interesting <laughs> writing. Than okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, the data center of the future. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, companies like Schneider play an important role in this because you you make make lots of of that that development possible. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Um, one of the things I want to start with is the, ro so the road to one megawatt per rack. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I still remember the days when we talked about five kilowatts, five whatever. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't, wasn't very big, but now we're up, at, up, up to about 40, 50, 100, depending mm -hmm. on your workloads. So could you just, why, how, do we, how do we get to one megawatt <laughs> per rack? So one megawatt per rack, it's, it's you know, it, we went through we went through this discussion I think a decade or so ago and there was a lot of speculation that uh, you know power densities would, would go very very high but I think the 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 architecture of the of the servers was usually one socket two socket x86 server and the new the new architecture for accelerated compute is much much different it's yeah. all it's GPU based. You can parallel, you know, up to eight and some servers sixteen GPUs. You're using CPUs to control those. Mm -hmm. You're using DPUs to control the data flow going in and out of those. And and there's a tremendous amount of, of memory in, mm -hmm. in these servers. So the density is is much, much higher. And the TDP of the GPUs is much, much higher. Yeah. So the, the industry was really resistant to, to drive the densities higher because what, the data center designs. What were, was that? It was, it was Intel too powerful, or what was it? Was, yeah, it was Intel that uh, I think you know had complete control of you know the Xeon processors were in, you know every server and every data center. So are you saying that we could have gone higher in density way before? Because obviously the reason we're doing it now is because it's it's necessary as well, right? right? Not only because there's a new form of compute, but also because that compute enables stuff that people want, and <laughs> so you, you need to be higher in density. Yeah, you kind of reach the physical limits of, of the, the CPU, and the CPU is, is what I call like the SUV of the, of the mm -hmm. processor world, because it can do many different things, where the accelerated compute GPUs just, just go fast and, and, and crunch as yeah. much data as possible. So you have, you have the, the, the driver of of the different type of computing architecture, which uses a lot more power. Then you have the necessity of running these GPUs in parallel. So mm -hmm. when you hear when you hear NVIDIA talk about, you know, a giga you know watt data center, they call it sometimes an AI factor, but they also call it a GPU because yeah. it's it's representing itself yeah. as a single GPU. Yeah. So that's what's causing the stensification, yeah. the need the need to, to, to put these yeah. GPUs but To a certain build. extent, that's quite funny because, I mean, we talked about uh, being very reliant on what Intel wanted before yes. this, but now we're actually doing whatever NVIDIA wants, <laughs> right? Well, we're doing what the, <laughs> what the architecture yeah. demands to, yeah. to, to operate, you know, at, 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 these, at these speeds. Yeah. So how much are you in control as Schneider as, as, as to where this goes, right? I mean, obviously you do, you do come, um, you do co-work on, on reference designs, I know yes, that, right? Yes. So how much of a steering role do you have in, 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 in this development towards the higher densities? So we're, we're, we're actively collaborating with, with NVIDIA on the power and the cooling systems needed for their next generations of, of GPUs. Mm -hmm. And the way that the GPU evolution is, is going, it's like every year they're, they're coming out with a new you know, we went yeah. from the Hoppers to the Blackwells, the Blackwell Ultra, and next is the Rubens, and then the Ruben Ultras. So, so we're working with them, and we like to introduce the power and the cooling designs um, 
uh, yeah. six months in advance of when they they start shipping yeah. the next yeah. generation. So the companies have a chance to 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 plan for yeah. the power and the cooling that, and, and that, start the point. Yeah, but but that sometimes also means that you you have to skip uh, uh, skip some steps, right? I remember you telling us during the event about uh, the, 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 the 800 VDC thing yes. that you're doing. You were actually planning on doing 600 first, right, you said? Yes. But because it's going so quickly, you actually have to, have to skip a step. Yep. It, it must be very, on the one hand, very exciting to work in this space because it's just going so quickly and you don't, you don't really know what's around the corner, right? Right. Not necessarily. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, it can also be very di distracting or, or very, very hard to do. Yeah, I, I would say that we're one of the few companies that actually knows what, what's, what's going around the corner because <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. because because you, you cannot deploy like the the you're, you're talking about the 800 volts, which are going to be the Vera Rubin Ultras in yeah. early 2027. Yeah. So in order to be able to support the 400 kilowatts per rack that 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 they're going to be uh, requiring, we're going to have to change the architecture of the power from the utilities to the servers yeah. to 800 volts DC. Yeah. So, so that's that's something we're actively working on. There's different ways to do it. You can do it initially. We we introduced uh, a, a sidecar that's take. We're taking the power supplies out of the servers and we're putting them kind of in a, in a separate cabinet. Mm -hmm. So, so the IT equipment will just be yeah. just. Uh, that's basically what happens in a, in a so a smaller scale version of what happens with the data center itself, right? Yeah. Because you see much more you see much more modules and pods being added outside of the data center nowadays, but it, and not necessarily inside it anymore, right? So this yes. is more or less the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the IT rooms and the and the and the rows and rows of, of servers is it's really it's really morphing into yeah. a very, very small concentrated area of compute and then the real Real estate that is going to be outside, where, where your chiller plants are, where your your uh, your yeah. your switchgear, your your UPSs, and and you know your backup generators are going to be. That's going to be interesting uh, to see because the, the the image that most of our viewers and listeners probably have of data centers are just like big warehouses that you see. Warehouses, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's going to change as well. Not only. Because of because of what's happening on the outside, but also <laughs> because of what's happening on the inside, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and the 800 volts, I think, was 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 chosen instead of the 600 volts because 600 volts couldn't get you to the one megawatt per rack yeah. that, that that we're going to. And, and that's 2029. 2028, 2029. That's, fi that's yeah. Feynman, right? Yeah. That's the yes. Feynman. Uh, that's the uh, Feynman. Yeah. So that's got another four years. That's, a, that's sort of an eternity in, the, <laughs> in this space. You never know where we're going to go, end up. But it's uh, but it but it's not not that an eternity that you don't really over you can't really oversee it, right? So it it is actually quite nearby. It is quite nearby, yeah. and we're even we're even working on you know what's going to happen after that, which yeah. is which is you know it's going to be you know you know yeah. quite a quite a big jump after that. Yeah. So so obviously for for cooling this kind of stuff, you need. Liquid cooling. I mean, that yeah. goes without saying. But I think starting from 50, 50 ish kilowatts. Yeah, around 50, more. 50 kilowatts. You know, it's very difficult to do. You know, you can do rear door heat yeah. exchangers up to up to seventy two. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But the, the, sort of the measurements differ a little yeah. bit if you look yeah, at the, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, the exactly. figures. But uh, but I, I also heard you say something that because a lot of it is still air cooled, mm -hmm. uh, so your, your power supplies and all that, all these yes. things. That might be tricky if you have to combine air and water. And I think I, I think you mentioned also that maybe we're moving towards full uh, liquid cooling, also for the, the, the what you would call normal air cooled stuff. Yeah. How, how, how would that work? Would you just immerse your power supplies and <laughs> and be, be be done with it, or how does that work? Yeah. So right now, when we when we talk about a liquid cooled data center, we're usually talking about direct to chip. So yeah. so basically. The part of the data center that's liquid cooled are just the processors, mainly mainly the GPUs. So you still have twenty or thirty percent of the equipment. Mm -hmm. So the IT industry, you know, is working on uh, designs where the things that aren't <coughs> direct to chip can be cooled with liquid cooling. So it's it's yeah. the kind of the whole way we look at the you know the standard IT racks and things that that, that may may all morph in the future as we start. Um, merging the you know the other equipment, the networking equipment, the uh -huh. power supplies, and and, and liquid yeah. cooling those as well. I mean that it also would entail quite a big redesign of your of your data center as well. I would imagine or not. Because well, like we said though, the IT, the IT part of it is getting smaller and smaller. Right. So it's going to yeah. be you know so. 
the need to standardize the racks to be able to put in standard thousands of standardized servers, that all goes away. Yeah. So you can do a, these bespoke designs you yeah. know, and just put everything in this, you know, you know, sealed in these yeah. uh, immersion tanks and, and liquid cool everything. Obviously, a lot of people, maybe not really in, necessarily in the know, uh, when they hear liquid cooling, they say, oh, don't use all our drinking water and all that stuff. But that's not necessarily how this, how this works, right? If you have proper liquid cooling, you have a closed loop system. You can, I, I, we've been to the, I don't know if you, you, were, you were in there earlier this year, but we've been to Portugal where you had, mm -hmm. where, they, where they build the data center where they use the, 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 the seawater to actually cool the, 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 the closed loop liquid in, in, in yep. the data center. Yep. So, and I think I heard you say something interesting yesterday as well, is that we're actually going to use less and less water. How does that, how does that work? Because you still have to cool your liquid in your data center. So how would you, how do you suggest we, <laughs> we use less and less water? So, so the more traditional way of, of cooling is with like cooling towers and evaporative cooling, mm -hmm. and which uses a lot of water. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an efficient way to do it electrically, but right. it uses a lot of water, which we can't do. So we have to move to more of the closed loop systems. Yeah. And the closed loop systems recirculate the water. Yeah. So, so it's, we're not using as much water. And like you said, there's other ways that we could use, like using seawater to cool the water that's, that, yeah. that's circulating. Yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's liquid cooling is, is, is not new. It's been around oh, for, no, for 50 years. I mean, I come from the, from the consumer space. No, so liquid yeah. cooling for gamers has been around for I don't know how long. Yeah, like yeah. All the nice bubbles in your, uh, in your yeah, exactly. <laughs> all that stuff. nice colors and all that. <laughs> no, but do you think do you think liquid cooling will have a fundamental foundational effect on uh, where we place our data centers? Is that is, or is it more because you can obviously use electricity to to cool your liquids in, inside your closed loop? But but the, more and more I see <coughs> companies deciding to build a data center in, in a spot where. For example, there's an underground river, or there's a, you know all that stuff. Yeah, or or cooler environments. There was yeah. a big there was a big push in the Nordic countries to build to build data centers to take advantage of the free cooling because, like you said, you know the 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 the, the chilled the, the chilled water is going into the data center. It's coming out of is hot water, yeah. and and that heat has to be has to be dealt with. And yeah. if you're in a cold environment, you could just deal with it with an environment you know yeah. with the environment, which is cold air, yeah. or you could deal deal with it with cold water. Yeah. That's our, uh, That's naturally uh, yeah. there. So well, probably there's also limits to that, right? But, but there I, are limits. But I heard you mention that Alaska is, is also very, very. Yeah, very keen Alaska on is very interested in how many people want to no, go yeah. there to, to, to work on. I mean, that's that's, <laughs> that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, because even though they're very cold environments, I can imagine that actually having to run it and having the people to run it that that obviously that's a just that's a different discussion but that's also neat there, need yeah there, are, there, that, there, right? there there's this philosophy that you can put a data the training data center in anywhere so because you know it's not going to interact with with people yeah but but the data and the people that it's going to have to interact with like the abilene data center the stargate data center is they're going to only do training and usually kind of medical oncology type of yeah. research in that they're not going to be using it for inference or for working models. No. But most of the other data centers have to, to be able to monetize them, have to be at some the, point. The Abilene yes. one is the one with Oracle is also yes, involved, right? the, the, Oracle. The, 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 the huge one. Yes. The, the, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, one, the first of the first of ten, or the first of twenty. Yeah, it's, it's a humongous thing. It, yeah. it, does it? Does that also have its own power supply? Or oh, so no, so no, it's it's going to be uh, my understanding. Two thirds of it are going to be natural gas turbines. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So they're going to so because, gonna, because you also now see a push for SMRs and all that stuff, right? So um, modular reactors to, um, to 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 power the, the data centers. Yes, SMRs because. Because of the, 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 the complexity and the timing that you're going to need for to modernize the grid to bring more power, you know, yeah. substations, high voltage lines, uh, SMRs can actually be put on site or adjacent to the site. Yeah. So and and they have very very high inertia. They're not like wind and, and solar, yeah. which has less inertia. But the the the, the the SMRs are very, very stable. Well, what do they call them now? Is it pink energy? No, pink. Wait, so, so not green, but pink. What is the? What is the so, <laughs> so pink, pink is yeah associated <laughs> with 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 with, yeah. with with nuclear now. Even though that you could argue that is the greenest form of energy, but I mean yes, yes. But, but obviously there are other <laughs> other sort of. D d d so the SMRs yeah, are designed to run on off of recycled uranium that's discarded from yeah. traditional uranium. Yeah. So. 
So it has a lot of benefits. It doesn't need the power distribution. It can run on, on lower, lower dosage uh, uranium. So it seems to be much more stable. And it, in a lot of cases, and they still haven't been you know, tested and, and approved for this, but you, you know, most nuclear sites have to be adjacent to some kind of water to, to cool them. <coughs> but these, these, they say, could be buried in the ground and, and air cooled. Mm -hmm. I have two two topics left, and then I think we're out of time. It's, uh, it's going very quickly, no. but uh, always what happens. Uh, I think, just briefly, microfluidic cooling, I think a lot mm -hmm. of people may not necessarily know what that means. That is actually cooling inside the chip, right? Inside the chip, exactly. So would, you, would we get just small heat pipes going, going into chips, or how, how does that work? <coughs> so right now, we were talking about directed chip. We're spraying the fluid on the back of the chip. This is actually taking the chips and running the fluid through the chips, so it's yeah. a more efficient way to cool it, but it will take, you know, redesign, the chips are going to be getting larger and larger, so there's going to be an opportunity to run it. So there would be heat pipes, so yeah. it would be, so as we move to liquid cooling and as Very small we, one. Very, very small, <laughs> very, very small pipe. Yeah. And then obviously, <clears throat> connected to that is the, is, the, is the push towards photonics, also inside chips. I could imagine that can also have a, a, an in, in, interesting effect on, on how much cooling you need, right? Because if you have photonics, you don't have the electrical kind of uh, switch from, uh, from uh, you don't have the switch from electrical to, to light and, uh, and the other way around. So that it, it will generate less heat, I would imagine, right? Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the data that, that, that we're seeing from the, the test sites with photonics shows a, a pretty big uh, increase in efficiency. Oh. So, so less heat output, so it, it would require much less. Do you have, uh, do you have any idea on <coughs> indication of how much of that increase in efficiency or decrease of heat generation will yeah, be? Yeah, the, the, the data that I saw, so it was 30 to yeah. 50 percent. Oh, so that's, uh, it that's quite impressive. It's quite impressive. Yeah. And then, then the, the one megawatt per rack is actually, uh, you can get higher density still, right? That's the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until the world needs you know, less and less processing. And yeah, well, that's not <laughs> that's 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 anytime yeah. soon, no. But the final topic? I mean, there's also lots of talk about stabilizing the grid, right, and helping the utilities uh, with that from data centers. I, I know there are, there are several data centers in, in Scandinavia that already are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how would that go? So would, would those data centers with all their UPSs and all that stuff help stabilize or shave off peaks? Or how, how, does, that, how does that work? So a lot of the data centers, you know, in the future will be part of the grid ecosystem because there are more and more uh, battery storage being added to data centers in addition to the you know the 10 minutes of UPS we're doing two hour batteries we're doing four hour batteries we're starting to use generators or starting to come up with the idea that generators can be used as grid stabilizers yeah. so this all has to be done and negotiated when the data centers are are permitted yeah. because there are restrictions on how much you can run on, on diesel backup yeah. and then the data center operators have SLAs. So all of this is changing. So the data center could be a more flexible yeah. asset. Yeah, but uh, last question, how would that work in, in terms of how data centers sell their uh, um, sort of space to their customers? Because from my understanding nowadays, when, when, you, when the data center sells something to a customer, it says, look, I will give you two megawatts of whatever, or 500, I don't know, whatever. <coughs> name, 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 a, name a figure. Yeah. Uh, and then it has to reserve that yes. for that customer. Exactly. So, but that would also severely decrease the flexibility opportunities that a, that a data center has in, in general to help the grid, I would imagine, right? So we need to move towards different ways of selling uh, space in, 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 in data centers as well then, right? Yeah, the data center operators have to be more cooperative. No. So, yeah, they were very, very restrictive and they had SLAs with the customers, but if you negotiate all that up front, you yeah. can negotiate the fact that the data centers can be more flexible yeah. and the customers, you know, you know, that have this power reserve, you know, have to have that power allocated to them, but the data center operators in, in the yeah. future can well, be I think more it's more what's needed as well is, is make, have, giving them an incentive to do this, right? Yes. Because obviously, if they, if they can benefit from it as well, the data center operators, they, they exactly. will be much more likely to. Uh, yeah. to exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for this interesting uh, discussion. It was no, a, it was great. Pleasure. Thanks for talking. <laughs> thank to you. you. Thanks. Thank you for watching TechScene TV, the channel about enterprise technology that brings you IT insights and analyses from events all around the globe. We cover everything, everywhere. Visit techscene.eu for more written in-depth articles and analysis, or keep watching techscene.tv.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share your favorite videos with your colleagues. We'll see you soon.